Jubilee, it is such a joy to be with you again this year. I have missed you. And since our last time together, I sincerely have been praying that each of you has experienced God's goodness, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the grace afforded to each of you, both in the hill and in the valley. And for those of you for whom just being here is a step of faith, an act of trust that God might speak to you through this conference, I'm here today to tell you that God is faithful. He will not leave you. And so as we dive into this journey together, this story that never gets old, the story of creation, the fall, and then redemption and restoration, I hope that this story buoys you and gives you fresh hope and an increased confidence of faith in the one who is the author of this story and yours. So like any story ever told, we start at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. You know what I think of when I think of the earth, formless and empty? I think of Wordle. If you somehow haven't heard, Wordle is a daily online word game that was created by this guy, this programmer named Josh Wardle back in October of 2021. It was a game initially intended for his own family and his friends, but in November of last year, he put it online and he opened it up to the public. On the very first day that it launched, on November 1st of 2021, only 90 people played the game. But as of recent estimates from the New York Times, over 300 thousand people now play this word game online. And every day that I show up online to play this word game, here's what happens. Here's a bit of my inner dialogue. It goes kind of like this. Should I start with my typical word today? No, it started with a P yesterday. They wouldn't do that two days in a row. But what if I get it right on the first try today and stick with what I was going to go with? But watch, today will be the day that the word starts with an X. You know what? That few seconds of inner dialogue equates to Jubilee. It equates to possibility. Instead of seeing what's empty as crippling, or overwhelming, the absence of what could be. I consider those opening moments where my thumbs hover hover over my cellular device trying to pick and choose the letters that will make up the opening word for the day. Moments of possibility. Moments where anything could happen, where what comes next is color or sound, or music, or an image. And as I read the opening verses of Genesis, that in the beginning, God created, the author began the story, and yet there was formlessness and emptiness, darkness over the surface of the deep. Well, I've read and heard this story before, likely hundreds, if not thousands of times. Imagine for a moment you hadn't. Imagine for a moment you didn't know what comes next. Just imagine God's spirit is hovering and the anticipation is building. The question forming in our minds and on our hearts is what comes next. Are you asking this very question in this season, Jubilee? Are you asking what comes next? 
after pandemic chaos, sure, but maybe that's the furthest from your mind today. Maybe you're thinking about what comes next in a relationship with a parent, with a former best friend, with the guy or the girl that you've been hanging out with and you're actually really trying to figure out if this is something more. You're asking what comes next after this year in school. You're trying to figure out if you're going to move back home, stay right where you are, pursue that internship or that part-time job or maybe travel for a while. What comes next in your health journey? Will you be able to sustain what you once were able to do given this new diagnosis? given new challenges with your mental health and all of the resources that come along with managing and caring for yourself. Personally, I'm asking God, what comes next in your church? Tides seem to be shifting. There's a lot of unknown. And yet, you've always remained steadfast and faithful, God. So show me what you're up to. For many of us, our lives look more like this blank grid than we realize or care to admit. We don't know what comes next. And for many of us, that might seem crippling or overwhelming, a little scary at times. But what if collectively we moved away from seeing what is unknown as paralyzing and in remembering that in the beginning of creation the spirit hovered what if that prepared us to consider the possibility instead and in this case of where we begin the story of creation the possibility comes immediately in the next verse with these three words, and God said. The possibility of creation doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It doesn't just happen by chance, nor does it struggle. Unlike my inconsistency every day when I wake up to play Wordle, the created order was brought forth in, by, and through specific, particularly spoken words from God that gave dimension, texture, shape, and life to what was once formless and empty. All throughout the days of creation, God said it, and it was so. Jubilee, we could get into the significance of each individual day and the interplay starting here and discuss the interplay between darkness and light. We could talk about how Near Eastern cultures viewed the cosmos and how it was divided up. We could talk about how the order of creation here serves as a poetic confrontation of Sumerian astrology or Babylonian hymnals demanding submission to other gods. The creation narrative points to God as creator of all and creation being under God's authority and in submission to God's voice. We could talk about the creation of people and the scandalous nature of people not only being created in God's image and likeness, but in how people were made partners in the stewardship of what was made. We could talk about all of this, and we could talk about so much more, but what I want to bring to you today, what I want you to remember, is that when God speaks, creation, life, lies on the other side. In this narrative, there was no part of creation wherein which God spoke and there was hesitation. Where God spoke and there was uncertainty. Where God spoke 
and there was a delay. Each and every day, God spoke, and there was light. God spoke, and it was so. Creation reminds us of the truth of the power that is held within the word of God. And so in light of that truth, Jubilee, that when God speaks, life lies on the other side, I have to ask you, what words are you allowing to form you? What words are you allowing to be spoken into your life, into the emptiness, the formlessness, and the curiosity of what comes next? On a small scale, I realized the power of words just this past Christmas. We were hanging up decorations and I took out the mistletoe, getting ready to put it outside over where people come into our home. And I exclaimed, look everyone, it's the mistletoe. And I could see my son kind of cock his head to the side, a little curious, maybe a little duped. Well, come to find out just a couple of days later, out of the blue, my son had asked my husband, Daddy, which toe is the mistletoe? See, in my son's case, the misunderstanding had minimal impact. But when it comes to our understandings of our identities, who we are and whose we are, Words have the power to either form us into alignment to the life that God speaks or in opposition to that very life. Think of the words that you've encountered just in the past 24 hours. Words from your friends or family members. Words from the songs that have played in your cars or from your phones. Words that you have encountered on the TV shows that you've watched. Words proclaimed from TikToks or Instagram feeds and reels. What about names? Maybe there's a name that has marked you for years. Words like dumb, ugly, unwanted, or weak. For the longest time, I held on to a nickname given to me in high school. That name was first assigned me on my high school basketball team, and that name was Oreo. If you haven't heard this word before, it's used for a black person who's black on the outside, but acts white or seems white on the inside. And for the longest time, this one word wreaked havoc on my identity. I kept asking myself, am I enough? Am I too much? Perhaps something is just so off with who I am that it is worth me being called into question about who God has created me to be. For years, that one word had me questioning my worthiness and my identity. See, the poet and author Maya Angelou, she speaks of this as well. She warns us, you must be careful, careful about calling people out of their names. Words are things. They get on the walls. They get in your wallpaper. They get in your rugs, in your upholstery, in your clothes, and finally into you. What words are you allowing to form you? Take a step further. What words are you using that form the people and the places in your midst? Because if the words that form you on your phones or from friends, if those words outnumber the words of life that God speaks into the unknowns, Jubilee, we will not walk in the truth of what God longs to create both in and around us. John's gospel confirms this right from the very beginning. He says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. 
Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. In him was life. In him was life. And that life was the light of all people. So I ask you to choose words that inform your what's next, that are God's words, God's life spoken over you and his people. These are words like, do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Words like, I have made you, and I will carry you. I will sustain you, and I will rescue you. Words like, I am with you always. Words like, do not be afraid. Now, these words were spoken to the people of God or to individuals in specific contexts for that time. We have to be careful to understand, to seek the places into which God spoke these words. But what I'm trying to get us to see is that God's word points to God's character and in that character, in God's self, is life. Jubilee, there is power in God's word. There is life in God's word. There is truth in God's word. There is sustaining provision in God's word. Get God's word in you and see what he creates and what you thought was empty and formless. Finally, I want us to see that God didn't just say. God also saw. God saw that it was good. Perhaps you've been comfortable and familiar with what God says. This isn't new to you. You've been taught to walk faithfully in obedience to the place that God points you to go. You know there's power in your own words, like we find in James chapter 3. But some of you have removed yourself from the narrative of creation. You've given up on including yourself in this ark. You know up here that you were made in the image and the likeness of God, but you forget that God didn't just say and create, God also saw God's creation. And in the seeing of creation, God assigned it not just a name, but a non-negotiable value, Jubilee. And that value was one of worth. That value was tov. It was goodness. And some of us need to know and need to be reminded that the entire arc of this narrative begins not just with things that were created by the very word of God, but that those things, yes, you included, were created and assigned the stamp of goodness. So I ask not just what words are you allowing to form you, but will you allow yourself to see you as God does? One day, my oldest daughter, she brought in a shoe box from playing outside. And this box was bedazzled. I mean, it had glitter on it. It was stuffed with fancy tissue paper and in it were leaves and little rocks. And it had this one cotton ball. And next to this cotton ball, something caught my eye and, and this thing was a bug to my dismay. And I saw this bug in this box and I asked my daughter, I said, honey, why would you bring a bug in this box into our home? And she said, well, mom, I saw the bug and it looked like it needed a good place to stay. Jubilee, some of you need to be reminded that God spoke in creation and he spoke creation into existence, but God also saw. And he sees you enough to create, to create a home for you in him, 
to pursue you, to love you, to send his own on a rescue mission for you. And we'll talk more about the rest of this story as we go along in this conference together. But here's my final reminder to you to choose the words of life. The words that spoke creation into being from the author of our story. Choose the words that will speak life into what is unknown to you, Jubilee. But also choose to remember that as we are here in the beginning, God didn't just speak, God also saw. He wasn't disinterested or apathetic. Some of us are believing those narratives today that God is far off and he doesn't care about the well-being of what you're going through. God is interested and involved with God's creation. He wasn't neutral. He saw it and he saw that it was good. And in the case of creating persons upon this earth, he looked at everything and he saw that it was very good. This was in the beginning. In the beginning, God said and God saw. May you choose the words of life and choose to see you the way God sees all of creation as very good. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for the beauty and steeping ourselves in the story of the narrative of creation, God. As we go along in our journey throughout this conference, may we remember that in the beginning, your word spoke powerfully into the formlessness and into the void, and it was so. God, there is confidence and power in your word, and so I pray that each of us would take stock of the words that form and inform our lives and choose the very word of life that is in you, the word that is your son, Jesus, the movement of the Holy Spirit, both leading and encouraging us on this journey together. And not only that, God, but would you remind us that we are seen, that you didn't just create, but you saw your creation and you gave it value. So Lord, would you restore the value, the inherent worth that is reflected because of you and each and every one of us gathered here today? We love you and we thank you for this time together in Christ's name. Amen.